I have some good news and bad news for the, for the two of you. You all are even on time, which is remarkable, considering uh, we've been going at it. Uh, it's a testimony to you, Jim. Well, I don't know about that. But the bad news is that all my little five-minute things have run over. So uh, anyhow, we'll adjust as we as we get there. But the amount of time is even. New, uh, new, uh, new lead question, uh, and it goes to two minutes to you, Senator McCain. What is your reading of the threat from Iran right now to the security of the United States? My reading of the threat from Iran is that if Iran acquires nuclear weapons, it's an existential threat to the state of Israel, and it is a threat to the region because the other countries in the region will feel a compelling requirement to acquire nuclear weapons as well. Now, we cannot allow a second Holocaust. Let's just make that very clear. But I have proposed for a long time, and I've had conversation with foreign leaders about forming a league of democracies. Let's be clear, and let's have some straight talk. The Russians are preventing significant action in the United Nations Security Council. I have proposed a league of democracies, a group of people, a group of countries that share common interests, common values, common ideals, and they also control a lot of the world's economic power. We could impose significant, meaningful, painful sanctions on the Iranians that I think could have a beneficial effect. The Iranians have a lousy government, so therefore their economy is lousy even though they have significant oil revenues. So I am convinced that together we can, with the French, with the British, with the Germans, and other countries, uh, democracies around the world, we can affect Iranian behavior. But have no doubt, but have no doubt that the Iranians continue on the path to the acquisition of a nuclear weapon as we speak tonight. And it is a threat not only in the region, but around the world. But I'd also like to point out the Iranians are putting the most lethal IEDs into Iraq, which are killing young Americans. There are special groups in Iran that are coming into Iraq and are being trained in Iran. And there is the, uh, uh, or the Republican Guard in Iran, which Senator Kyle had an amendment in order to declare them a sponsor of terror. Senator Obama said that would be provocative. Um, so this is a serious threat. This is a serious threat to the security in the world. And I believe we can act and we can act with our friends and allies and, and uh, reduce that threat as quickly as possible. But have no doubt about the ultimate result of them acquiring nuclear weapons. Two minutes on Iran. Senator well, Obama. let me just correct something very quickly. Uh, I believe that the Republican Guard of Iran is a terrorist organization. I've consistently said so. Uh, what Senator McCain refers to is a measure in the Senate that would try to broaden the mandate inside of Iraq to deal with Iran. And ironically, the single thing that has strengthened Iran over the last several years has been the war in Iraq. Iraq was Iran's mortal enemy. That was cleared away. And what we've seen over the last several years is Iran's influence grow. They have funded Hezbollah, they have funded Hamas, they have gone from zero centrifuges to 4,000 centrifuges uh, to develop a nuclear weapon. So obviously our policy over the last eight years has not worked. Now, uh, Senator McCain is absolutely right. We cannot tolerate a nuclear Iran. It would be a game changer. Not only would it threaten Israel, a, a country that is our stalwart ally, but it would also uh, create an environment in which you could set off an arms race in the Middle East. Now, here's what we need to do. Uh, we do need tougher sanctions. I do not agree with Senator McCain that we're going to be able to execute the kind of sanctions we need without some cooperation from countries like Russia and China that are, I think Senator McCain would agree, not democracies, but have extensive trade with Iran, but potentially have an interest in making sure Iran doesn't have a nuclear weapon. But we're also going to have to, I believe, engage in tough, direct diplomacy with Iran, and this is a major difference that I have with Senator McCain. This notion that by not talking to people we are punishing them has not worked. It has not worked in Iran. It has not worked in North Korea. In each instance, 
Our efforts at isolation have actually accelerated their efforts to get nuclear weapons. That will change when I'm President of the United States. Senator, what about talking? Well, uh, Senator Obama twice said in debates that he would sit down with Ahmadinejad, Chavez, and Raul Castro without precondition. Without precondition. Now, here is Ahmadinejad, That's who is Ahmadinejad, who is now in New York talking about the extermination of the state of Israel, of wiping Israel off the map. And we're going to sit down without precondition across the table to legitimize and give a propaganda platform to a person that is espousing the extermination of the state of Israel and therefore then giving them more credence in the world arena and therefore saying they've probably been doing the right thing because you will sit down across the table from them and that will legitimize their illegal behavior. The point is that throughout history, whether it be Ronald Reagan, who wouldn't sit down with Brezhnev and Dropov or Cherninko until Gorbachev was ready with Glasnost and por por Perestroika, or whether it be Nixon's trip to China, which was preceded by Henry Kissinger many times before he went. Look, I'll sit down with anybody, but there's got to be preconditions, and those preconditions would apply that we wouldn't legitimize with a face-to-face -face meeting a person like Ahmadinejad. Now, Senator Obama said without precondition. Uh, so let, let's talk about this. First of all, uh, Ahmadinejad is not the most powerful person in Iran. So he, he may not be the right person to talk to. But I reserve uh, the right, as President of the United States, to, to meet with anybody at a time and place of my choosing if I think it's going to keep America safe. And I'm glad that Senator McCain brought up the history, the bipartisan history, of us engaging in direct diplomacy. Senator McCain mentioned Henry Kissinger, who's one of his advisors, who, along with five recent secretaries of state, just said that we should meet with Iran, guess what, without precondition. This is one of your own advisors. Now, understand what this means without preconditions. It doesn't mean that you invite them over for tea one day. What, what it means is that we don't do what we've been doing, which is to say, until you agree to do exactly what we say, we won't have direct contacts with you. There's a difference between preconditions and preparation. Of course we've got to do preparation, starting with low-level diplomatic talks. And it may not work, because Iran is a rogue regime. But I will point out that I was called naive when I suggested that we need to look at exploring contacts with Iran. And you know what? President Bush recently sent a senior ambassador, Bill Burns, to participate in talks with the Europeans around the issue of nuclear weapons. Again, it may not work, but if it doesn't work, then we have strengthened our ability to form alliances to impose the tough sanctions that Senator McCain just mentioned. And when we haven't done it, as in North Korea, let me just take one more example. In North Korea, we cut off talks. They're a member of the Axis of Evil. We can't deal with them. And you know what happened? Uh, they went, uh, they quadrupled their nuclear capacity. They tested a nuke. They tested missiles. They pulled out of the non-proliferation uh, agreement. And they sent nuclear secrets potentially to countries like Syria. When we re-engaged, because again, the Bush administration reversed course on this, uh, then we have at least made some progress, although right now, because of the problems in North Korea, uh, we are seeing it on shaky ground. And, and, and I just so I, I just have to make the, 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 this general point that the Bush administration, some of Senator McCain's own advisors, all think this is important. And Senator McCain uh, appears resistant. He even said the other day that he would not meet uh, potentially with the Prime Minister of Spain. Uh, because he's, you know, he, he wasn't sure whether they were aligned with us. I mean, Spain. Spain is a NATO ally. Of uh, if we can't meet with our friends, I don't know how we're going to lead uh, the, the world in terms of dealing with critical issues like terrorism.